Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. Welcome to another Monday Mastery, where I offer you my take on the recent energies and a little bit of guidance on how to move forward. I'm excited to be here with you today. I have said this in the past. Sometimes it is um, challenging to bring week after week after week the encouragement of keep going. I know it's difficult, but this week it's not. So I'm really, really excited to deliver positive, happy news, maybe the most positive and happy news we have had in a really long time. Along with that, very exciting guidance, more downloads keep coming through, more insight, more awareness, which I'm super, super excited to share with you. So I'll take just a brief second to cover um, sort of the solar energies and maybe a little bit of the astrology uh, this week. And then the timeless message uh, will be followed by that. So regardless of when you see this, there is always beautiful, amazing golden nuggets that come through on how to navigate and move through life. So if you find this a year from now, that's great. That's when you need to hear that message and it uh, likely will resonate for you. That's how you know it's for you. If it's not, go ahead, move on. All right. So last week was an M flare filled week. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details because it was pretty much just about a handful of M flares every day, which was not too intense and yet um, active enough that it wasn't boring, which was kind of fun. So um, we did have seven M flares last Monday. So that was pretty significant. Um, I guess I will go through them two on Tuesday, five on Wednesday, three on Thursday. Um, we did have some elevated KP conditions on Friday. We reached a KP five. Um, we had two M flares on Saturday, one on Sunday with seven C flares. So that's still a fair amount of activity. And then we've even had two today, two M flares plus a C flare. So there's the week in a quick rundown. Hopefully that didn't hurt your ears because I just bumped the microphone. Um, we did also have a, a small minor Schumann resonance spike on Tuesday and Saturday. Um, most notably, I would say there was a lot of fatigue that came through um, Saturday and Sunday. So I, I heard it not just from family members, from friends as well. So if you were feeling extra tired on Saturday or Sunday, you were not alone. Um, we do also have eight sunspots facing the earth right now. So there's a potential for a significant activity coming up, but nothing is assured. So there's the, the solar weather for the last week. Um, we have lots of changes coming up astrologically. So this is part of the reason I'm super, super excited is we have closed eclipse, eclipse season, which whew, thank goodness we made it through. Um, the Scorpio full moon was sort of the, the closing of that door and it is palpable. I can feel the relief. It is amazing. No longer um, do I feel like I'm standing on the edge of a cliff or having my finger in a light socket. We've got some calm, um, calm, calmer energy. And yet there is uh, a clear sense of a picking up of speed or momentum, which is a good thing because I would say with the eclipse, there was activation, but not necessarily momentum. Um, so that's really interesting. So we have Venus and Mercury moving into Taurus this week, I believe. Let me double check that, make sure that's right. No, sorry. Venus moving into Taurus this week and the sun moving into Taurus. Um, Mercury will move into Taurus on the 15th. We also have Mars moving into Aries, um, as well as Pluto moving retrograde this week. And coming up, we have Jupiter moving into Gemini. Um, by the 20th. So pretty much the month of May is is filled with a lot of different shifts and changes. And so when one sign moves um, from a, sorry, when one planet moves from one sign to another, we feel a shift, especially when it's something like Mercury, which is our mind, or Venus, um, our self-worth, or our abundance, or Mars, our masculine drive, right? The, the masculine and feminine of Mars and, and Venus, these are all the personal planets. So things will feel different for us internally as well as, um, well, and the sun, right? How we're experiencing things, as well as something as big as Jupiter moving into Gemini that marks a whole new year of a different theme of energy. And so of course, Jupiter is still close enough to Uranus to be considered conjunct. Um, and then also with Pluto moving retrogrades. And so that's a pretty significant shift in energy as well. Um, and what I love about Pluto moving retrograde is sort of a review of power. So if there's something that has felt oppressive to you or had some sort of power over you, this is a beautiful chance to review that and take back your power. So lots happening. I, I think I'm really most excited because it, we've, we've gone through a pretty significant Aries 
um, theme with the eclipses and Chiron and, and a stellium of planets, which means three or more in Aries. And now we're moving into the Taurus energy, which is the natural second house of um, self-worth and your value and your um, feeling supported, right? So if you think of um, ter- uh, Taurus as your food and, and the, the earth that grows your food and the sustenance that sustains us. So this is a beautiful place to have um, a, a more than three planets kind of hanging out and, and offering us this theme of support not to mention with Mercury moving direct and, and being out of eclipse season and all these planet changes, it's just, it's a, it's a significant momentum shift, right? So how was the energy, the quality of the energy really has felt like we are, are getting our footing. We're figuring out where we're at now. And, um, there was a seemingly the beginnings of new progress last week, sort of that getting to know this new place that we're standing in, feeling our way around this new world. Um, Something very significant shifted and changed with the eclipse, um, whether it's internally or externally or both. Um, If it's an internal shift that will lead to an external shift, um, it, it feels like we are in a new place. We are in a new world. We are new beings. We are moving through life in a new way. And this past week has kind of felt like just kind of the, the getting the sense of the quality of where are we at now, right? Feeling our way around that, um, getting our bearings. There's still a little bit of a sense of a pause, but I have high hopes that this momentum that's being created right now is, is the beginning of us sort of moving out of this divine extended pause that we have been in. That's kind of what I started to allude to when I first started the video was just I have been saying we're still in the pause. We're still in the in between. Um, it feels a little bit like it's it's like the old is fading to black. It's as if you're changing the opacity on a picture, where the old is sort of fading out and the new is sort of fading in behind it. And yet there's still a little lack of clarity on exactly what the new looks like. Um, but again, we're kind of getting a, a sense of the quality of that. Um, And again, the momentum is starting to pick up. So we're starting to see that there's finally a little bit more movement towards the new. Um, The energy has not felt difficult this past week necessarily. In fact, I would say quite a bit of bliss energy was coming through on Friday, especially. Um, And again, regaining energy, um, the lightning of the intensity and just this renewed sense of hope and, and, and being able to at least feel into or sense the newness that is coming through as is very very helpful. Um, I love the the image of sort of just the the changing of opacity, right? So that the old fading out and the new fading in is is a beautiful, um, reassuring feeling, right? I've noticed too that there's sort of testing, not real difficult testing, but sort of um, you know a little nudge from the universe, like remember who you were before, or remember that thing you used to do, or remember that way you used to think, or remember that vice that you used to have. Are you going to do it? Right, it's not a pushing. It's not a um, you know spiritual warfare t- warfare type feeling. It's just a question: Are you still are you still that person? Are you still going to think that way? Are you still going to do that thing? And for me, it's been really easy. It's just like, nope, I'm not that person anymore. I don't do it that way anymore. I don't think that way anymore. I don't see it that way anymore. And as long as we keep reaffirming who I am now, right? Use use new keywords. Define yourself. Really take a moment after this video and really think about. How did I see myself before and how do I see myself going forward? Who who, who am I now and what is the new me? How would I define this new me? Give words and meaning to your new identity. And every time that test comes through or that question of, you know, are you going to go do that old thing again? Just reaffirm. Nope, I'm not that person anymore. I'm a thriving, high vibe individual that is creating heaven on earth and helping heal people along the way, Right. I am fully supported. I'm an unlimited being receiving from an unlimited source in unlimited ways. And I receive beyond my wildest dreams, right? Use new words, use new language. Look within for that shift. Don't look outward because everything you see outside of you is an echo of who you used to be or your past energy. Where we look for the change is within. Sit with your own inner being and listen to your parts. If you have worked with me or if you've had one of my free 30-minute sessions, you know what this means when I say parts. If you have not had one and you want one, there's usually a link below. Um, But we are all made up of parts. 
We, we, our physical being is a vast library of resources. Many of us use this much. If you work with your chakras, you might open them up, but you likely, if you've not moved through the healing or you're still feeling stuck or life isn't quite working the way you'd like it to, you're likely living up here and not utilizing the vast library of resources that is your entire physical being as well as, so if, if you talk to a traditional psychologist and they work with internal family systems, they will call it parts and you can have a manager part or an inner child part. Um, but I also work with the archetype parts and your, your organs tend to behave as parts. They all are wise. They all have messages for you. So you want to listen to your parts, especially through the internal focused awareness on the sensations in the body. And this is a key factor. The brain thinks in words, the body thinks or communicates in sensation. So you want to be with the be with the parts, be with the sensations. Don't let the brain analyze and try to understand, just be present with them. And that's what we do in part in the, the free healing sessions, if you're ever curious about those. But you really want to learn to commune with the God spark that lives within you, right? The kingdom of heaven is within, right? The body is the temple of the spirit. And so there is tremendous, unbelievable. There's no words to explain the, the vast wealth of knowledge and guidance and clarity and information that lives inside of you that you can only tap into through stillness. And that means stillness of mind and body to be present with those sensations and let them speak to you. I'm getting reminded of a beautiful example of someone I worked with this past week. I asked them, you know, what are you feeling in your body? Describe that sensation. And they said, it feels like a dog wagging its tail. And that's like how amazing the body is and how fun the body is to work with, because you just, you wouldn't logically come up with that explanation. And that's how we know the body is speaking. So start to learn to, to be in your body and be present with those sensations. Listen to the vast wisdom that is coming from your entire library of resources, right? Remember that the God spark within you or, or, you know, source energy that animates you. It, it is the thing that beats your heart, right? The energy that causes you to breathe, the energy that runs your autonomic nervous system, the, the source creator energy that lives within you wants to move through you. So we know that we are a Taurus field, that this energy is moving through us all the time. And my body's getting excited as I'm talking about this. So let that move through you and notice how are you restricting it? We restrict with our minds, the veil, the illusion, the separation, it's all thought, right? Course of Miracle says a miracle is a shift in perspective. So notice, how do you restrict the source energy that's trying to move through you? Do you say, yeah, but, or I can't, or it never works out for me? What are the old stories that you tell yourself? How do you limit yourself? What are the walls you have created through the thoughts and perceptions that you choose? Look for those negative perceptions. Look for how you respond negatively to life. Look for the negative thought loops and start to challenge them, catch and replace, right? Catch and replace, release all limitations, right? This is what it means when they say you have everything you need within you, the vast library of resources. You have the ability to choose a new perspective, to choose a new thought system. And yes, to some extent, if you have unhealed trauma, you will have to close that stress response and work with the subconscious or the parts within you that developed that limiting belief. But once you've done that, it's very, very easy to say, okay, this new pers or this old perspective that I have is limiting me and I'm now going to replace it with a new one. It is simple when you learn how to use the body and I can promise you it is, it is so soft and easy. I don't even, I'm not trying to toot my horn. I just want to give you hope that it is really, really amazingly simple and easy. Okay. So catch and replace means reframe those thoughts and perspectives. Tell yourself a new story sit with the inner child that created them, sit with the part that created them until that sensation dissipates on its own. Do not force it with the brain. Do not try to convince. I mean, think about how do you feel when someone's telling you how you should think and telling you what to believe? Do you ever actually embody that belief? Or do you just keep it up in your prefrontal cortex and you're like, yeah, yeah, I know the thing, but I don't really feel like I believe it. Right? That's the difference of sitting with these sensations and letting them complete their process 
So they, the parts, your body come to the understanding of the new belief on their own. We cannot force. And that's why sometimes affirmations can work, but usually you need the healing first um, so that we can really receive and embody. I don't want to get too far off on a tangent here, but um, yeah, let them dissipate naturally and then come back to that source energy that is moving through you. There is, this is, it's a, it's a nuanced thing to try to explain because you feel it more than you really articulate it or consciously or cognitively uh, understand it. It's a, it, the embodiment is the feeling and the knowing of it, right? So when you come back to that source energy and you've noticed that you've removed those stress responses or closed those stress responses and the, the sensations have, have dissipated, there's an expansion and an opening and a lightning where that energy starts to move through you again. And that is when we start to receive and attract instead of chase and effort. This is the beautiful gift that is life, that we were not meant to struggle and to strive. Yes, it is true. Building a business requires effort, but it doesn't have to be hard. There's no struggle necessary. We can leave the struggle bus behind. And my lovely friend, you know, who gave me that beautiful gift of a, a phrase. Um, but remember that we are working with the internal environment so that we can move into receptive attraction, which is the parasympathetic nervous system state, which requires the stress response closing and the trauma healing. But when you get there, the flow, the row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, it's a real thing. Attracting, allowing it to come to you is so effortless that there's no more struggle, struggle bus required, right? Start to notice. This is the, the beautiful, um, nuanced language and understanding of our relationship with source, right? If, if I'm solely on my own and I'm completely in my unhealed trauma and I'm hypervigilant or completely frozen and I believe I'm on my own and it's all up to me, that's a pretty unfortunate, yucky, stuck place to be. But healing will bring you to oneness. Now, the opposite can also be true that if I solely rely on source and I, I say, thy will be done to the extent that I'm waiting for you to come rescue me and I'm waiting for you to save me, that's also very stuck. But bring that together with my action and my understanding and my willingness to do this work so that I can open up to receive and also the support of the divine, it never, it, it's, it's no longer, is it me or it, right? Me alone or source alone, but together it's we. There is, there's a unification of that source energy that is animating your body that you know the free will perspective comes in that I get to choose what I let go of. I get to choose to move out of the way so that source can move through me. And all of this is, is relevant in this moment because we have a lot of astrological support, obviously a, a high solar maximum um, period of time is, is driving us towards leveling up, obviously we're always leveling up, but there's a lot of momentum that is helping us. But if we don't do our part in closing those stress responses, removing the things that get in the way, opening up to source and learning to partner with source, then we can still stay stuck. But getting unstuck doesn't have to be difficult. It's very, very easy. And so remember, source loves you so much so that it beats your heart and it pumps your blood and it breathes and animates your entire body every single day. You could not be more precious, more valuable, or more loved. Remember that. And the path is easy. If you learn to listen, utilize, utilize the vast library of resources that you have and allow source to love you, allow support to come in. It's an allowing process. It's not an efforting process, right? If source loves you and source is supporting you, because that's clear, you're alive, you're breathing, you're here, then let yourself receive the love. Let yourself receive the support. Let yourself be carried by the momentum, open to receive. And the best is truly yet to come.
I love you, my beautiful friends. I will see you on the next one. Namaste.